everybody and welcome to post processing for photography the holiday edition really excited to uh to come back with uh continuing the the you know the focus on photography but also you know how to look at some of the fun things we can do to you know kind of celebrate the end of the year and to look at uh you know just again taking our regular photos that we might be taking and how do we just make them from ordinary into extraordinary and that's really one of our goals today so uh, you know, I just want to thank everyone for joining us. I uh, just want to thank all our partners in this project. So we have the Canada Council for the Arts, and then we have all our library partners. So we have the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. Now, in terms of equipment, uh, I'll be looking at more of our personal devices. So you know, the the iPhones, uh, iPads that we looked at uh, in last week's session. And if, in case you missed that last uh, session. Um, it will be it will be posting those up to, to YouTube uh, uh, later this week as well, so that you can go right to our YouTube channel, so tbmcs.ca, and you can check us out there, and um, you can you can rewatch this. So and even even every session you can rewatch. So if you uh, if even if you signed up last week and you didn't get to see it live, you can rewatch it. So don't forget that aspect. So uh, in terms of equipment, the library, all our library partners that I just mentioned have iMac uh, computers, 27-inch iMac computers, and what we're doing is we have them loaded with the Affinity creative software tools. So that has Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and Affinity Publisher. Now, Affinity Photo is basically like Adobe Photoshop. So it has the same tool sets, the same uh, abilities, and so on. So it's re a really great piece of software. And it's low cost. So if you even want to purchase it, um, you know, we're talking about $70 for like a, a one-time purchase price. And then you can have put on your own computer. And it's, uh, it's a Mac or Windows. And also what I'll look at today is we have uh, Affinity Photo is available for iPads and that's uh, at a lower price point. I think it's about $25. So you can purchase that as well. And uh, we do have our uh, iPad Pros and uh, iPads uh, available through the library partners too. So a lot of uh, great equipment that we can we can look at and, and talk about. So just wanted to you know start look at look at some of the concepts behind photography. So we can always get a better understanding of when we go to edit photography. Where what are we dealing with? And um, you know kind of looking at some of this this history. So <coughs> excuse me. So the idea of like what is raw photography? So you know film negative and and that kind of idea. So you might come across this, and I just wanted to kind of debunk this of, of what we're dealing with. So raw photography, we're usually dealing with that in DSLRs. And then you have those raw cinema DNG uh, uh, files instead of JPEGs. So what we're working with now when we work on our phones is more of a JPEG. So that's really important because it's a big difference between the raw and the, and the JPEGs. The JPEG has all this color information in it. So you're limited a bit of what you can do. But the cool thing is, is there's something called the uh, HDR photo, so the high dynamic range. And what it does is it's a photo, but it takes multiple photos in different uh, brackets of exposure. And then the phone, <coughs> when you go to edit the photos, you can um, you have more ability to do some editing with it. So we're going to look at some of the scenarios. We have some stuff from our, our last week's session, but I took some new pictures. And I think what's important is some of the scenarios that we'll usually deal with. So you know, what, what are the best ways, what you can, what you can do. And then, uh, in terms of photography. So, you know, think about your composition, think about your lighting. And one of the biggest problems that we find in winter season in general is lighting. So we tend to have a little bit more reflective surfaces like the snow, and that can put a lot of backlight into, uh, into our uh, windows. And then what happens is we end up with, um, you know, different issues of, a really strong sunlight going into a scene. So whether that's a photo of a person or, um, or a photo of uh, the, um, uh, you know, like a Christmas tree or things like that, right? So I have, here's some photos. So here's a Christmas tree uh, photo I took. And you can see that that window in the background is definitely, you know, causing some issues. It's a bit brighter, but it's not too bad. So it's kind of in the range. And, and what I've done here is I've left the high dynamic range, the HDR mode on. And what this, it's really doing some amazing wonders. So it's creating this latitude of range of exposure. Uh, and this is an iPhone 11, uh, an iPhone 11 Pro Max, I guess is the model. Um, and it's creating these multitudes of photos and then figuring out what the best way to combine them is to give you that exposure. So this is kind of magic that you can do. So remember the phones have some magic in them and, uh, and that's really one of the cool things that, that we can remember. Now, 
like here's another photo um and then I, I went a little bit closer and you know you start to see what we talked about last time those like you know getting that bouquet the blurrier image but you can see that smurf ornament's a little bit dark so we're going to look at how we can touch that up and then here's that classic you know concept here's a photo of me with the christmas tree and then that light in the background is blown out right and that's always a, an issue how what do we deal with but then you can see if i go in front of a window and i expose for the window then i'm too dark so this is that challenge of how do we deal with it so you know in photography again i would usually err more on the darker image and then bring it up but we're going to look at what we can do in, in the editing and stylistically what we can play with these what i go is once we go to the uh, to the photo mode um, we have all this amazing these tools so we can do so we can do like you know um, play with uh, contrast um, we can um, uh, you know work with all the all the different tools here on the bottom so shadows brightness saturation so this is this is the cool thing is that within the phone and this is kind of the thing is like within the phone we have all the same kind of tools that you find in Photoshop and that's what I just wanted to really stress is that we can get into really fancy things with Affinity Photo, Photoshop and all these additional tools but you know what a great way to be able to just work right here. So exposure is exactly what it means so we can make things uh, brighter so you can see I'm making that see how the window blows out and then I get a, a nicer looking um, tree or I can make it a bit darker and then the, the window is in a better exposure but the tree is too dark right so that's that's always a, a bit of that issue so I would usually just make this as a touch brighter and you're gonna have to just kind of work with um, that um, outdoor uh, sunlight being a little bit brighter and that's just the nature of uh, photography in uh, with with these bright um, uh, uh, windows outside so highlights what that does is now it's taking the brightest spot so notice the window if I crush the highlights it makes it like dark right so it's not a good thing but we can also make the highlights even more brilliant so like that's like for the lights and so on so you know or, or make it a touch uh, a touch darker or touch uh, or increase it right so we can bring it bring it down a little bit bring it up right so you just you can see the, there's a positive there's a negative and I'm just doing this with my hand okay so that's that and then the shadows that brings up the darkest spots so we always have highlights shadows and the last one will be uh, our contrast here so shadows that's like okay let, you know can we we can make it a bit darker and that's kind of helping with the contrast so i always like to put a little bit more contrast um so to make it a bit darker so to, to make those shadows a bit richer because i think there's something for like you know flat images flat photography um not always the best uh you know looking photos when we're finished and when we're, we're working on stuff um so that's the shadow side now the contrast um so you know here we're reducing contrast so you can see how that goes brighter but you can also have more contrast so then with that is the contrast is basically it, you know we're stretching stuff out from the lightest to the darkest and we're stretching it out so we have the really dark darks and then we have the really bright highlights and we have that real nice range so that's something to think about when we're we're into that uh venue so that's the contrast brightness overall is like you know how bright is the image so again i can make this you know darker brighter right so you know ten, generally for holiday photography you might be looking at these these kind of brighter images black point is essentially where the the where, where the darkest parts are and this is a really kind of more advanced tool so if you bring up the black point notice how dark that christmas tree gets in the real in the shadows and i can bring it up and this flattens it and this is that kind of instagram filter look it's you know what a lot of the filters do is it's reducing the black point into this less contrast flatter look so and this is the tool so you know we can go to instagram we can use those those filters and just click things on and go wow that looks cool or we can actually figure out how to do it ourselves here so you know reducing the black point for example is that is almost half the filters on instagram have this uh flatter uh, uh you know less contrast look so we can do it here but i can also go okay let's let's go the other way and you, you know some of the filters too they, they add more contrast so that black point really uh brings that up so really really what you're doing is you're, you're looking at kind of crushing the blocks with the black point so we increase the black point we're crushing the real dark areas of the image into uh, a real high contrast point and that's that's something that's really interesting saturation so this is the overall color right so you know again you can go super saturated like that right it's like out of control we can desaturate so we can go into black and white so zero or negative 100 right we can just do a slight reduction and we, we get these really cool looks again you know maybe you want to there's a nice tendency of maybe add a little bit of more color when we're getting into these holiday photos so that's saturation 
vibrance it's the um, the amount of color within the um uh within the saturation so how vibrant are the colors right so the the yellows will be like super yellow the reds will be super red uh warmth so we can make the image less warm right we can go cooler and you know again for holiday stuff we tend to always want to go a little bit warmer everything's nice and warm and, and nice like that then we can do tinting you know overall tinting like this so you can see we're going kind of red we're going the other way that one i tend to not use too much and then sharpness that's that thing where you know you you make things like super sharp that kind of ultra hyper realism you can see how sharp that tree is getting right so that's that's always a really cool uh tool as well definition uh just defining the image overall and then we can do a vignette so we can you know create this this kind of that vignette that you you see sometimes in uh, Instagram photos too, right? So this is kind of neat. So we can really play with a lot of that. So look how, how quickly we can work with things. Um, so that's that. Then the next uh, one, we can go to these straight filters. So we can just, you know, quickly go to vivid warmth, vivid cool, these nice presets. But it's already working on what I did. And it's enhancing that a little bit more. So this is a, another really quick way, you know, going into something vivid, vivid, warm, like that looks really cool. That's a nice uh, looking kind of image like that. So, you know, let's go with something like that. And then we can go to, we can straighten things. And this is really important because sometimes this angle is, you know, it could be a little bit, um, a little bit uh, uh, crooked, but you can see how, see how it can rotate and I can, it's basically zooming in and then it's, it's allowing me to uh, straighten things out, right? Or I can go to auto and it thinks that it's doing something right, but it's probably not doing the best job. So anyways, if you if you slightly want to realign things, that's an, another way to do it. And then when you're done with all of this, um, there's a, on the top menu there, there's also aspect ratio. So you can say, hey, you know, do I want the original? Do I want a square? Uh, you know, different aspect ratios for depending on where you put it. So if you're going to post it, let's say on Instagram, you could consider a square and then I'm just moving my fingers to realign it and figure out, you know, where the best position is for the uh, for the image. So that would be how we could do a square. I'll just go back to the original, and again, um, and then figuring out, you know, you can you can always like see, you can zoom in, you can reframe these things, and and it's it's really cool. So you can do a lot of really neat things. So that's where we can deal with that. We can also go into like a uh, instead of vertical, I can make it horizontal, and reframe it as well. So a lot of really cool things. So 16 by 9, I can basically make it like a video size image. So let's say this was like a, uh, you know, you might want to make a thumbnail for a video that you're posting and you might want to put a photo thumbnail. So this is how you can go vertical from, you go from vertical to horizontal, 16 by 9 would be your video ratio. So that's uh, really cool. So again, back to that, uh, back to kind of our original, but you can really do some, some cool reframing things here. So then when I'm done with that, I go done. Okay. And now I have this uh look at that kind of a before and after uh a really cool job we've done and and you know kind of reducing and you know just by i've zoomed in i should know here i've zoomed in a little bit on the window so just have it like you can have that essence of the window but now we're not dwelling on it in this shot we're really going like oh man that window i wish you know i could see more outside so you know here we've blown it out a bit and we're not worried about it anymore so that's a really great way to, to quickly uh you know, figure that out. Okay, so here's here's a, this kind of a scenario here with uh, with uh, like this kind of ornament photo. So you know, again, kind of rehashing. Um, you know, what what do we want to do? Um, so again, I can just you know, I can bring up the exposure a little bit, and I can um, you know bring the shadows, make the shadows a bit darker, and you know, I can make it really bright. And then here we can really play with that black point. Do we want it, you know, a little bit darker like that? And that's already looking pretty cool. Um, vibrance, sharpness, you know, how sharp do we want it looking? Um, and then, you know, again, maybe maybe just a little bit of a vignette. Kind of nice. And, you know, just playing around with, you know, what's cool. So you can see, like, some of these work really nice. And again, that Vivid Warmth is a great go-to filter. So I'm going to definitely recommend, here's that Dramatic Warmth. But let's even just go with the original here. Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit like that with my fingers. Done. And look at that. Isn't that fantastic? 
uh, a lot nicer uh, than when we started, right? So we get those close-ups, nice uh, bouquet. We have the softer backgrounds, really interesting look. Okay, so here, now we got these kind of photos here, and I thought this was an interesting. So here's the exposure, you know, what to, what to do, right? So if we if I expose for myself, the window's blown out. If I expose for the window, then I'm kind of darker. So let's look at, my theory here is that it should work better to be underexposed, to kind of expose for in between, and now we can post-process it a little bit more. So I'm gonna start with the exposure. Right, look at that. Now I can really just kind of bring it up a touch and you know make it, it, it make it a little bit more elegant. And how how you know we're gonna have to have that window blown out a little bit, it's just how it's gonna be. And you know, we can get a, a pretty nice looking um, idea here. Okay, and noise reduction. Oh, this is a nice tool here too, so that we get this noise reduction. So look how it's getting rid of that, um, the noise there around me. There's like a bit of that speckle, um, and then maybe a little bit of a vignette. Okay, and here we might wanna just look at, you know, what, what tint do we want? So right now it's a little bit on the warm side, so I can take a little bit of the warmth out. Isn't that, you know, that's a great little, a quick tool to to get from there and then uh, you know playing with the different filters and we can say okay done nice right so that, I think that's a really interesting looking photo and again a little bit more dramatic and, it, and it, to me it pops a lot, a lot nicer to work with this this has nice contrast and I'm you know really kind of telling that story some warmth you know here I am uh, <laughs> it's my selfie um, versus this one this is just you know, it's exposed for me, but it's really not a, a great storytelling image. This one is uh, interesting. Like, it's capturing that kind of holiday candlelight warmth. So, you know, really thinking about these these kind of elements of, of what we can do, right? So, again, getting the right kind of image. So, let's let's go with this one here, and then we're going to go to some of our earlier ones. Um, uh, I'm going to go over to the iPad, and we're going to play a bit in the um, with Affinity Photo as well. So we can see that kind of difference. So I'm just again, I'm just using the straight in the straight in the um, in the in the uh, in the photo tool editing here, and you know just trying to make this work. A little bit more contrast. See, see how like the contrast can really help make this nice popping image. A little bit of brightness up. Here we can play with the black, black point, so we can make that really flat kind of looking image, or we can go really rich. So I'm going to go more with this kind of richness, because I think, I'm, I'm going to say this holiday is about um, having these, these kind of richer uh, contrast images. Okay, and now let's go over here. So now, you know, what, where do I want to reframe it? So that's, that's pretty cool. And then, you know, do we want to, Maybe we can make it a square. That's pretty nice. Done. Okay, so again, pretty nice. So that's you can you can see kind of the before and after of um, what we're doing. Um, and here's kind of the information. So the iPhone 11 Pro Max um, and uh, seven megapixels. And it gives you the information too, and and I think that's always really cool. The metadata here, so it tells you the the approximate focal length and your uh, f-stop, shutter, and all that stuff. So it's really cool. Okay. So that's really nice. Okay. So now let's uh, let's look at. I'm just going to uh, switch over to the iPad, and. This is going to give us a little bit of a difference uh, in terms of what's uh, what's possible. So we're going to go over here to the iPad. Oops. I'm hoping that this will show up here. There we go. Okay. So this is one of the photos we took last week, and I just have to I just realize one of the computers went down in the power outage. So I'm just going to reboot this here. Okay, so 
you know, here's, so I'm just using an iPad, a regular iPad. Uh, it's about a year, year and a half old. I think it is a seventh generation iPad. Um, so, you know, really something that you might have around already. Um, and I know I'm, I was just demoing with an iPhone 11 Pro Max, but I, I realize it's already iPhone 13, so you know technology keeps changing. But these tools are very similar, and they can be adapted to Android devices too. So that kind of editorial would be very much in the same uh, vein in what you're doing um, with with these tools here. So so that's that's how that works. So now let's just look at you know our, our, our what an iPad you know very similar same setups. Right, so I have the same kind of adjustment things. Maybe I can go this way and we'll have a better shot if uh, and I go vertical like that. Same idea, so these, these tools are the same. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, confirm that. Um, so same thing, you know, what, what's our exposure gonna look like? Uh, brilliance. Can definitely make that up a bit. And then the highlights can definitely, you know, use a little bit of a boost. Shadows. We might want to bring those shadows up because it's a pretty dark looking image. So I think just a touch of the shadows and we're going to maybe, you know, kind of less, less contrast here um, and play with the brightness. Maybe just a touch down. You can see I'm getting that really kind of nice glow around the cookies and figuring out what that is. And maybe we'll put a little more saturation. A little more vibrance and maybe play a little bit with the vignette. Now, I think what's important with this one here, I definitely am thinking I would like to, you know, kind of reset. I w I'd like to kind of reset the image or reframe the image to really focus on the cookie. So, think about your composition, your rule of thirds, and getting that interesting story. So, I have the snowman with the cookies, Christmas lights. That's a lot more interesting than all of this other stuff that really doesn't mean anything to the photo. So, you know, don't be afraid to get in and, and just, uh, uh, you know, get right into, um, you know, working in, in that vein like that. So I'm just gonna go right in here and done. Okay, so there's a there's a, my new photo. Okay, so I just saw, uh, there's a question popping up here about uh, a sepia filter. So that's a, a great question. And we can we can actually achieve that. I'm just gonna play a little bit with the exposure here. So what to achieve a sepia filter, uh, we can create our own. And this is the whole thing is like how can we create these things on our own? So what we do is we would we can just desaturate and put a little bit of vibrance and put a little bit of warmth, and we can tint it into sepia. So there we go. We start to get into that kind of sepia mode. Um, and then it's just a matter of, you know, how much saturation. So sepia I always find is, you know, it's kind of that idea of um, being, um, you know, just desaturated with a hint of warmth. So there's there's something kind of, it's a cool little sepia look. Right, so you can see th this would kind of be the opposite of sepia, the green, and here I'm just adding like a bunch of warmth like that. And that's pretty cool. So I think I think that kind of got into a bit of that sepia filter. Um, and again, maybe we we reduce the saturation a touch more. So it has that just that hint of the, the color. Right? And it can give us that old look of a photo. So I, I hope that that work nicely and then we can look at the some of the filters here uh, so silver tone noir mono dramatic cool dramatic warm right so you can add some of these filters on top and I think I think this dramatic warm is putting that sepia right into what I would call a nice a pretty nice looking sepia look so there we go that's how we can achieve uh, uh, sepia like that okay so now the next thing I want to look at is we have these apps, and again, this is a, a low-cost app, so you can just get these. Affinity Photo goes on the um, on the App Store, and again, our library partners. You could you can go in and um, uh, you know take out uh, iPads that have this software loaded on it as well. So you know, don't forget about that. I think that's a really great uh, tool that we have access to. Um, but so you know, here's here's what we can do with the 
Affinity Photo. So I'm going to go right into Affinity Photo and I'm going to open um, the, um, the, uh, the photo up in here. So the, now what, what's going to happen is we're going to get into basically like a, a Photoshop type uh, photo. So I'm going to say do, 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 import from photos. Okay, so I'm going to just go to the recently added and let's get um, get this one in there. So let's, let's play now in Affinity Photo. So again, this is a lot more advanced. There's a lot more different tools. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to kind of talk through them. So there's, there's different layers. And I realize my output here, we're not necessarily seeing the, the different menus. So on the sides here, there's all the different menus. So I'm just going to basically kind of talk through and highlight what, what I'm doing. Um, and uh, we do have on our website a more detailed uh, tutorial on Affinity Photo. So I just want to quickly talk through some comparisons of what we can achieve in here. So here we have, we can have different layers. So that's already like that more advanced Photoshop concept. And then what we can do is we can get into some uh, uh, effects. And what I'll go here is we can go into, you know, quickly we can go black and white and uh, brightness, we can mix the channels, color balancing, uh, and so on. So let me just go, oops, back here. So here, here we can add a little bit of warmth, right? And that, look how we can, we can get even more kind of a, a, a sepia, uh, you know, look to it you know, by adding a lot of this warmth right there. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so now let's go back. I'm just gonna create another one. So I was just, you know, quickly getting into that. Uh, let me just import that again. Do, 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 recently added get this one again. Okay, so here we go. So, you know, here we can, we can play with um, uh, brightness, contrast, the channel mixer, color balance, curves. So in curves, this is always what's really interesting is we can get into, we can apply like curves and, you know, play around with, you know, kind of the brightness and so on. Now curves, just so you can see there, you know, this is the idea is we're putting, we can put this curve on and we can, we can play with the the you know mid tones and dark areas and stuff and this is a very standard Photoshop type tool um, and uh, and then we can go with the exposure and you basically can just like you know br brighten it darken it and, and work with it like that so there's a lot of really neat things a lot of really neat tools um, And then we can like auto contrast and apply all these really cool filters. So this is a neat thing. So we can, um, you know, do a lot of extra work here in this program. But, you know, again, if we're, if we're getting into, um, in, into this kind of software, it's, uh, it starts to get, uh, you know, kind of an overkill in a way. Um, in terms of you know trying to fix things or or uh, you know do applying too much almost. Okay. Then we have like our channel mixer. So here we can you know deal with red, green, and blue. Um, we can transform this and and so on. So a lot of a lot of great uh, tools in here. Just looking through here. Yeah. So it's fantastic. Okay. So now let's bring in something else. Uh, import from photos, and I'm going to get one of our uh, cookie shots in here. <clears throat> so here's kind of our cookie shot. So the, the channel mixer is interesting because we can say, okay, let's add a little bit of red. Let's take a little bit of green, a little bit of blue. Right, we can make some really interesting uh, um, plays with this. Uh, 
right? So we can make some, some really crazy looking uh, images. So HSL, uh, that's always, uh, I think uh, we've talked about this before, but that's that a uh, huge saturation and luminance. And I think it's a really great tool um, because What, what it does is it brings up this uh, hue, hue, saturation, and luminance. So hue is where it is in terms of the color. So I can, um, you know, quickly kind of change the, the, the color tone. So you can see how it, we can quickly go from like to, to this purple and warm. So we can offset the hue. Saturation is how much color is in it. So we can quickly reduce the amount of saturation. And luminance is the you know the the amount of uh, brightness or luminosity of the um, of the image. So you know we can really make it a lot darker looking, and so on. So that HSL is a is a really cool tool to quickly you know you can desaturate. We can, and then that this is where we can get into some really nice looking um, kind of that sepia look that that kind of old fashioned look. Um, and you know, and that's that, to me that's really interesting to to play with that. So again, so now we can go to exposure. Uh, I'm going to go to curves. So what I've done is basically just applied a bit of a curve like so, and we have our image like that, and then we kind of end up with this. So again, this is playing with, and you know, I'm not necessarily interested in having you know. The, like perfect beauty shots, but I'm interested in how can we tell stories of, of like cookies and things. So this is the whole idea is like maybe these are, you know, grandma's cookies and this is, it starts to tell a story like the plate, the textures of the cookies, the color filters. Um, it creates a mood, it creates an atmosphere. And this is neat. Like, you know, you see this and then you're, you're in, inspiring questions or are getting inquiries like, okay, what is this? Why are you posting something like this? So think about that instead of just beauty shots of just everything looking the same, how, you know, it, it's a lot more interesting to get into, you know, posting, um, uh, you know, shots that are like this, like, you know, this old time, um, uh, you know, kind of image. Um, and, uh, you know, having a, you know, playing with that. So here, I'm just going to go to the crop tool. Uh, let me get out of this one. Okay, so I'm going to go to the crop tool here. And what I'm going to do is just, I can take this crop tool and I can crop down the image. So this is, this is what it's doing. It's basically putting a grid over what I want to see. And then I'm just going to hit apply. And now I have just that. So I'm getting rid of that background. And again, what an interesting story. I got the snowman, it's this kind of sepia tone and, uh, and, a, and a very different type of uh, a different type of look. Okay, so let's import uh, um, from my photos here and look at some of the recent ones. Let's do another uh, cookie, cookie one and just kind of play with, um, again, something Let's go back here, actually. Okay, so I'm just going to go over here. Um, so let's play with, you know, what, what, uh, with a, a brightness and contrast. So we kind of bring that a little bit more contrast color balance. So here we can apply it to midtones. So you get that really warm kind of looking cookie. Um, I'm going to go to the curves again. Get that kind of nice, really dark, rich So one thing to think about is like, you know, how, you know, how much, uh, you know, contrast do you want to have and what's that going to look like in the, as, as we go through that, um, you know, we can do these kind of inversions. So 
you have lens filters, right? Like what, what a crazy uh, amount of, uh, you know, what we can play with, you know, and all of a sudden we got this, like, what is this, right? So again, playing with storytelling in, in our images and um, uh, we can put up these lookup tables. Um, we can posterize it. Um, and uh, what else do we have here? Vibrance, white balance, and so on. So really, again, totally crazy images, right? Like we go that way, uh, and, and you know, why not? You know, that's that can be a, a really fascinating um, uh, photo here as well. So let me just go through here again. Yeah, so that's that's essentially what, we, what we're able to do. So Affinity, again, there's a lot of work in, uh, in working with affinity and uh, you know I don't you know I think it's it's a great tool but just working right off the the camera tool so I'm, I'm just writing the photos and uh, you know basically opening up my photos um, and I'm able to to work with stuff right in there um, and yeah and it, you know it's, it's such a it's such a great tool to be able to to, to play with um, in terms of just getting, you know, these kinds of, and here's kind of the auto, right? So you hit auto and it's going to kind of put all these things up and say, okay, this is what I think you should do. Um, you can see, just bring the highlights down, bring the shadows and again, playing with that, that uh, contrast. Got our black point. And you know, why not? Maybe we go with like a lot of saturation. A lot more vibrant. You know, do we want more warmth? Do you want to tint this a little bit warmer? And make it a little bit sharper. And our good old vignette. You know, so keep the you know, keep the essence of what you know, what are the stories you want to tell? What do you want to do with with the images and you know and go beyond the ordinary and think about the extraordinary so how can we uh you know make storytelling the essence of our post-processing so taking taking if something's too overexposed let's adjust the exposure or we can make things very overexposed uh un intentionally so we can go the other way too so you know what happens if um uh i think we have some of the earlier photos here let me see, I have them on the phone here. Some real close-ups. Um, yeah, here's a good one here. So here's here's a, a, one of the close-ups that I did. Um, and here's one of those like highlights that we've done on the, on the camera too. Yeah, so let's go right in here. So let's just see about editing here like right into the cookie so look if I if I make these a bit brighter if I you know pr play with the brilliance bring the highlights down a little bit and bring those shadows up a bit maybe a little more contrast that really getting this vibrant like you know you want to just go and eat these cookies maybe touch warmth all going on the kind of the warmer side maybe just a little bit of a vignette look at that so there we go So what a yummy looking image, right? So I'm just brightening it up and this is, you know, and that's fine. This is a great way to just, you know, we basically put in some brightness and vibrance, the black point again, to give that real big contrast range, a lot of extra color, like 10% more color, 10% more vibrance, a little bit of hint of warmth, hint of uh, 
you know, warm, warm uh, uh, shadow tones and, and things like that. So really interesting. So here's one of the ones we did in terms of we we're looking at, okay, telling the story. Again, this is, this is just kind of that, you know, ordinary looking image. But, you know, what if we can really play with, you know, kind of the milk and the, the snowman's like kind of waiting for, for this. So again, really playing with the shadows so we can focus on our, our front image there. A little bit more contrast. To me, that looks a lot more interesting to really, you know, crush that and, you know, highlight that the, the, the snowman's looking for the milk. And that's really trying to help our storytelling point here. A little bit of saturation, 10% more vibrance, a little bit of warmth. And here's the thing, do we want some vignette? Maybe not in this case. So again, here's our story enhanced. So we had that before where we're, you know, working with um, um, the... Uh, you know, the, the bright, bright image. And then we have this after where our eyes are now really looking at, um, you know, the, the image. So here's like our original. And here's where we are before and after. Right. So what a great tool. Right. So we can always go back. So just... You know, if if you if everything's gone wrong, you don't really like where you've been with uh, adjusting things. You can just revert to back, right? So you can see the original, and then you can go to the revert if you want to. So I can just cancel out. That's it. But look look at the uh, the great photos we've done here. So here's here's where we are, and here's kind of our before, really plain, right? And look at all that color and contrast. So it makes you want to definitely like you know eat these cookies. This story really helps guiding it, like relighting it. Always think of that. Like how, how do you enhance things to help guide the, the audience through things and, and make things, uh, you know, help further along the story. Um, you know, we could also go to something like this and say, you know, we want to, there's that, that noir one. Like, look at that. Like, it's kind of the, the mystery, like the, the snowman going after the, the, um, the cookies. And that, that could be fun too, right? So that that noir photo, film noir, like making it kind of like the the um, um, you know kind of the villain going after the cookies and, and working in that manner. So a lot of really fun things. So um, again, I think that's a you know a focus on what what can what can the story be that you're telling? What does the photo need to help enhance itself? And just think about there's there's only so much we can do in post processing. Um, and, you know, especially with holiday photography, you're, you're trying to go, go, go. And, and you know, you're, uh, you're, you might not have a lot of time to spend, you know, an hour like post-processing. But you can see quickly in, in like a minute, I can adjust things and work with that. So things to avoid. Let's go over that again. And when you're taking the photo, you want to avoid that strong backlighting. If there is a bit of the backlighting, try to frame around that. So not putting the people right in front of windows or the subjects. Like So if there's like trees, ornaments, food. Try to put it not directly in front of a window because you're going to have that contrast issue. There could be a window on the side. And then think about reframing to help the story. If there's a lot of noise around or empty space and things, reframing composition. That's great. Post-processing could be as simple as, you know, just doing a little bit of reframing to recompose things. Because sometimes we take a picture and we're like, oh, shoot, there's a lot of headroom. There's a lot of that. So that could be another thing. And then just what's the color look? What, what can help enhance the story? What, what do we want to tell? And try to make things that are extraordinary and instead of just the ordinary. So it might not just need to look like, oh, that looks nice. But what about if it's extraordinary? And that it could look weird. It could look, you know, fantastic. It could look, um, you know, over, uh, you know, uh, unrealistic can be really good things. So try to think outside the box of what is ordinary. Go to the extraordinary. And then you can share these uh, photos and, you know, reframe and you can re reconstruct it into like square spaces if you want to put it for Instagram and so on. So have a lot of fun. That's the key with, with this. But, uh, um, you know, really try to always make the what's, what could just be ordinary into something a little more extraordinary and then share it and, and get noticed. And being different and being, you know, focused on trying to tell these stories through your photos will definitely put you above the crowd.
and uh, and when you when you do things. So again, these tools can be applied to all photography, but this is the, you know we're looking more at these these. There's going to be these bright windows generally with when there's like some snow conditions, and uh, for for winter, and then there's all this amazing food and composition to work with. So think of food stories and how we can make that work. So yeah, so again, thanks for uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, I want to put up my email here, tom at tbmcs.ca. If you have any questions, uh, just send me an email. If you want to share photos, uh, always happy to see what's going on out there. And uh, we'll go from there. So we have a lot of workshops coming up in January. Be sure to check them out. We have some in-person. Uh, we're hoping to uh, get back into more in, uh, in January as well. So stay tuned for those details and definitely a lot of sessions and online. We're going to start having some uh, meeting groups and a lot of fun things coming up in 2022. So really excited to see you guys uh, continue. I want to thank all our uh, partners in this project. So we have uh, the Canada Council for the Arts and we have our library partners. We have Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. And remember, you can check out all of the iMacs with Affinity Photo on there. And there's iPads loaded with Affinity Photo, so you can take out that technology loans from our library partners too. Have a great rest of the day, and I will see you guys soon. All the best.